This is Cyberpunk 2077, running on the same operating system that runs on the Steam Deck, but we've got a more powerful APU, and performance here is absolutely amazing. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at SteamOS 3, otherwise known as Steam Deck OS, running on this brand new B-Link Ryzen 6000 powered mini PC. Recently, I did a full review on this. It's known as the B-Link GTR 6. We were running Windows in that video, and uh, this is definitely pushing a lot more power than the Steam Deck can, given the APU that we have here. And of course, since it is a 6000 series APU, we've got those RDNA 2 graphics with a few more compute units and a much higher clock than the Steam Deck has. But, uh, you know, one awesome thing about these mini PCs, we don't have to worry about battery life. We can take the TDP on up and really not even have to worry about it. Basically, what we need to watch out for here is heat, but this does a really good job. But before we move any further, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by Ridge Wallet. Now, I'm sure a lot of you out there have already heard about the Ridge Wallet, but recently I made the switch from an older leather trifold wallet, which I replace every three years, to a Ridge Wallet. And uh, yeah, I really do like this thing. They've got a lifetime warranty. They offer 30 different colors and styles over on their website, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. I went with the carbon fiber version. It's made with RFID blocking technology and it protects you from digital pickpockets. And it's 2020, so you might want to protect that chip you got there because yeah, there is technology out there that will allow somebody to swipe your chip while it's still in your pocket. But you know, my favorite thing about the Ridge Wallet is the look and feel of this thing. I mean, I think it looks absolutely amazing, especially in the style I have here. And by the way, Ridge also offers these really awesome key cases. So if you're looking to keep your keys organized, they fit up to six keys and they also have a lifetime warranty just like their wallets. So if you're interested in learning more or maybe picking up one of their products, head over to ridge.com forward slash ETA. And from now up until December 22nd, you can get the best deal with up to 40% off. Remember, that's ridge.com forward slash ETA. So for this, I'm going to be using an operating system called Hollow ISO. And if you're not familiar with it, basically they took the Steam Deck recovery image, modified it, and now we can basically install it on any PC. Now I'm really excited to show this performance off, but real quick, I wanted to give you a rundown on the specs here. So this is known as the B-Link GTR6. We've got the Ryzen 9 6900HX, 8 cores, 16 threads, base clock of 3.3, and a boost up to 4.9. We've also got the built-in Radeon 680M iGPU that's based on RDNA 2. We've got 12 compute units here, and it's actually clocked up to 2400 MHz in the H and the HX models. And the GTR6 does support two M.2 SSDs, but I'm actually going to be running this operating system from an external drive. I've got a little Kingston portable SSD here. It's one terabyte and I can just run it over USB and it does perform quite well. And here it is. Remember, we're booting from that external drive. That way I can kind of move it around. I didn't want to flash another M.2 right now. But yeah, I mean, on this Ryzen 9 6900HX, this operating system is performing absolutely amazingly. Again, this is Hollow ISO, and we have access to everything we would on the Steam Deck, except for TDP control directly from this menu here. Unfortunately, this feature doesn't work with other hardware besides the Steam Deck, but luckily we do have some plugins that we can install, and the one that I personally like to use is handheld power tools. Now, obviously, this was really meant for handhelds running Hollow ISO. And as you can see, this will go up to like 90, but this APU just isn't going to hit that right now. We can get up to around 65 watts, which is perfect for a little box like this. We've also got a little bit of overboost. We can turn multi-threading on and off. And we can also disable the CPU boost, which actually really helps out because a lot of these games don't need those super high clocks. And on the 6900HX, we've already got a base clock of 3.3 gigahertz. But yeah, I mean, everything here is working with this little mini PC. We've got Bluetooth, we've got Wi-Fi, Ethernet, obviously we've got sound here. And if I head into the settings, you can see that we've got that Ryzen 9 6900HX and the 680M iGPU. We've got 12 CUs there. And I'll tell you, this one does boost up higher than the 6800U, but we've got that 4800MHz DDR5 RAM instead of 6400MHz, so it does kind of even out there. And overall, performance with gaming has been great here. And another thing you can actually do with Hollow ISO 
is per game, we can actually change the resolution. So if you just started up a game without changing this, it's gonna default to 720p. And even from the settings, we can't go any higher, but we can actually set it manually here. So we're gonna go to 1080, but remember Spider-Man Remastered is just one of those harder games to run on an APU. So we're gonna be running it at 720p. Okay, so with Spider-Man Remastered, we're at low settings, 720p, and we do have FSR set to balanced. I'm going to tell you right now that this is the best performance I've seen out of this game on any APU so far. This is actually really awesome. And in fact, this is performing better than it did in Windows. And you know, I've tried everything with this game, and most of the time, in SteamOS or any kind of Linux variant, I don't have great luck with this on an APU. But on this system here, I mean, it is trucking right through. We could go ahead and lock this down at 60 and just have a really great time with it. But uh, one thing I am noticing here is, yeah, we're definitely pushing a lot of power to the GPU side of things on this, and our temps are getting kind of up there, so I think with the next games that we're going to be testing in this video, I'm going to turn CPU boost off. We've got a 3.3 GHz base clock on the 6900HX, and I think that's going to be plenty for a lot of the games that we have here. But yeah, this is some really great performance out of Spider-Man Remastered, given that we're running this on an iGPU. Next up, we've got Doom Eternal, and I've always had really good luck with this on APUs. 1080p medium settings, and we can definitely get over 60 FPS. We're getting an average of around 72. Looks great here at those medium settings, and I was able to up that resolution to 1080 on this machine instead of, you know, keeping it right there at 720. Here's Sonic Frontiers, and this actually performed much better than I thought it would. Initially going into this, I was hoping we could get 1080p high out of it. And right now we are at 1080p high, but we've got the resolution scale from the game itself set to 50%. And with it like this, we can get a constant 60 out of this game. The Witcher 3 did so good on this little machine. We're at 1080p, low settings, and we got an average of 79 FPS out of this. I know it's an older one, but uh, sometimes when you try to run this on lower end systems, it kind of falls on its face. But the 6900HX is trucking through with this one, and we could always turn V-Sync on and turn a few more of those settings up to medium. Right now we're at low, but it still looks great. I also wanted to throw a couple fighting games in here. So first up, we've got Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, high settings, 1080p. And going into this, I really didn't think we'd have any issues. Now initially, I'd say about 30 seconds into the match, you will get some skips, and those are kind of those shaders being cached, but it does work great once those are out of the way. And the next fighting game I tested here was Injustice 2. I've had really good luck in Linux with this game. Um, it's not Steam Deck verified or anything like that, but whatever they've done with Proton does allow this game to run very well on a lot of different systems. We're at high settings, 1080p, and we're getting a constant 60 FPS. And since we were here, I figured I'd just test out Left 4 Dead 2 to see how it does. Maxed out at 1080p, we're getting over 100 FPS. I didn't think we'd have an issue running it on this machine. Project Cars 2, 1080p, high settings, and I still love playing this game, love the rally cross here. I would have loved to test out Forza Horizon 5, but unfortunately I don't own it on Steam and I'm not going to buy it again. I've got it on Game Pass or Xbox, so I've got it on PC and Xbox. I also tested out Elden Ring, and basically on any APU I've ever tested this game with, I've always had to go to low 720p with it. Some of them do better than others, but in Linux, this is some of the best performance that I've seen out of an APU. Of course, you can see that we're not quite at a constant 60, and one thing I tried to do was enable FSR or system-wide FSR here. It didn't help out at all. I mean, we were sitting at the same frame rate. And the final one here, at least in my opinion, was the most impressive out of everything that I tested today. Cyberpunk 2077. We're using the Steam Deck preset here, 720p, remember we're still on an iGPU. 1080 at 30 is possible with this, with that Steam Deck preset, but I really wanted to see what it would do, kind of just like the Steam Deck would run it. And we're over 70 FPS with this APU. I mean, this thing is definitely trucking through. 
it looks great and you know sometimes when i test these apus out i get way better performance in linux than i do in windows with this specific game and this is definitely one of those times i mean i'm really impressed by what this thing's doing here Overall, this Ryzen 6000 mini PC does perform quite well with SteamOS, and I can't wait to see more manufacturers release these PCs. We're going to see the 6600U, the 6800U, and we've got the 6900HX right here, which is the top of the line model. But another thing I'd love to see is just faster RAM. Now, if you check out Amazon, you can get the DDR5 SODIMM at 4800MHz, and I think I've even seen some 5200MHz RAM. That would help out. We've only got 48 here, but going up to like 6400 would really help out with the 6900HX. We'd have that faster RAM like we see with these Ryzen 6000 handhelds, plus we've got a higher clock on this iGPU. The 680M here is actually running at 2400 MHz as opposed to 2200 MHz and something with the 6800U, so we could get a little better performance out of this for sure. But really, this is just kind of the beginning of these Ryzen 6000 series mini PCs. In the next few weeks, maybe month, we're going to see a lot of our favorite manufacturers release these, and I'll have more reviews coming up. But I'd actually like to hear from you guys. What did you think about the performance here with SteamOS 3 on this mini PC? Now, I know for sure that we could get a little better performance out of the 6800U with faster RAM, but when it comes to CPU performance, this is definitely going to trump it with those higher clocks. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this thing, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.